Welcome to our instructional video on light and lighting. Did you know enough energy hits the earth from the sun in an hour to power the earth for a whole year? Try to think of earth's plants as miniature solar reactors because they take the sun's energy and turn it into a sugar called glucose during the process of photosynthesis. The sugars produced from photosynthesis power the entire food chains around the earth. When growing plants, the sun is the optimal source of energy. It's free and very strong. However, weather is unpredictable and some places don't get sunlight. Some places are also either too hot or too cold or don't have a long enough growth season. Depending on your location, sunlight may not always be available or available in long enough hours where successful growing can occur. To correctly grow plants indoors, it's important that you mimic this natural light cycle. Color or temperature of light triggers effects in plants as well as timing of light. Let's take a look at the science of how plants are genetically bred to react to changes in light. To understand plants' needs, you must first understand light. Light leaves the sun and comes in two forms, visible and invisible. The invisible light is ultraviolet, which has the most energy and tightest wavelength, and infrared, which has the least energy and the largest wavelength. The visible light is broken into the spectrum, Roy G. Bibb, as it was taught in elementary school. The visible spectrum is seen quite frequently in rainbows. The sun's energy leaves the sun and travels through space to reach Earth's atmosphere. Earth's atmosphere is like a screen. It allows larger wavelengths to get through while bouncing the smaller ones around. This is why the sky is blue, because the small wavelength of blue light scatters around more easily than the larger red light. This is also why you can see red and orange sky in the evening and early night, because the uninterrupted red light hits you directly when the sun is low. Similarly, the seasons have different amounts of colors of light because the earth is either tilted toward the sun, as in spring and summer, or tilted away from the sun, as in fall and winter. When we are tilted towards the sun in spring and summer, there is more blue light, and when we are tilted away from the sun in fall and winter, there is a higher degree of red light. Plants recognize and react to the color of lighting. Plants recognize blue light as spring and summer light, and it triggers plants to become undormant and to grow or to vegetate. Red light begins to signal the end of the growth season and triggers plants to flower or to produce fruits, also known as the flower stage. Timing of light is also an important part of the plant light equation. In summer, the days are longer, and in winter, the days are shorter. Plants react to changes in their light schedule. Plants that are vegetating enjoy long days, 18 hours of light, while plants that are flowering often enjoy shorter lighting days or 12 hours of light. Changes in the duration of the light you give your plants can cause your plants to change. This trait is known as photoperiodism. It is important, however, that when you have established the timing for your plants, that you keep them on the same schedule. When setting up your grow space or grow spaces, it is recommended to use the following settings. For a vegetative room, 18 hours of light and 16 hours of dark. Use blue lights with a wavelength of 440 nm. Metal halide gives good blue light. When setting up a flower room, it's good to use 12 hours of light and 12 hours of dark. Be sure to utilize red and orange lights with a temperature of 660 nm. High pressure sodium bulbs are a good source of red and orange light. It's always a good idea to supplement with other lights or colors or a pure white bulb to ensure peak performance of your plants. There are various types of lights in which you can equip your grow room with each with different types of bulbs. There's four major types of bulbs we're going to talk about. Incandescent, high intensity discharge or HID, fluorescent, and LED or light emitting diode. Incandescent bulbs for all intents and purposes of growing indoors are pretty useless. They have a high energy demand and low amount of lumens. CFL bulbs or compact fluorescent bulbs are very good for the vegetative state. They require little energy and also give off little amounts of heat. However, the amount of lumens that they produce is small and is usually only used for leafy vegetables. High intensity discharge bulbs give off the most amount of light. However, because they give off so much light, they also cost a lot per, of electrical use per month. They also give off heat, which if not handled properly, can damage plants.
LED lights are the newest type of light on the market. They're very good as far as heat and electrical costs go, and they're also very good as far as the amount of light they produce. However, they are by far the most expensive type of light. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to come check us out at Always Sunny Hydroponics or visit our website www.sunnyhydro.com.